welcome to the Ultimate Coach Podcast, Conversations from Being, inspired by the book, The Ultimate Coach, written by Amy Hardison and Alan Thompson. Join us each week with the intention of expanding your state of being, and your experience will be remarkable. Remember, this is a podcast about being. It is a podcast about you. To explore more deeply, visit theultimatecoachbook.com. Now, enjoy today's conversation from B. Hello, my name is Cordelia Gaffar, and I'm the team lead for the Ultimate Coach podcast, as well as one of the hosts. On Saturday, February 25th, over 300 people met in a room in Mumbai, India, for an event called the Ultimate Experience India Edition. This last part, India Edition, is to distinguish it from the two previous in-person Ultimate Experiences held in Arizona and London, and the one virtual one. India has a long history in spirituality and being, so why would a place like this require a reawakening from people whose country pales in history? Could it be a pure meeting of East meets West and humanity aiming to be as one? Let's listen to the reflections of some of the participants, some of the speakers and organizers, and finally, Steve Hardison himself, who made this event what it was. For those of you who are new to the Ultimate Coach podcast, And the book about being it's based on, which is called The Ultimate Coach Book, strap in and get a deeper understanding of being. Okay, I'm Nicole Dahl. So thank you for taking a couple of minutes to share on The Ultimate Coach podcast. Um, You spoke today at the Ultimate Experience India edition. I'm just curious, how are you feeling in your body now? Uh... It's a mixture of being tired because it's been a long day and also very light. Uh, I've been blown away by this whole day. I mean, it's been absolutely incredible. I was fortunate enough to be involved in the London experience and I was blown away. I, I really have never attended anything like that. And all the while I said to Ranjan, I want this India experience to be better than London, and, and I think they've actually done it. it. It's just been superb from start to finish. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that. And your contribution as a speaker, um, how do you feel about that? Because I know we spoke a couple of days ahead and you hadn't really pulled it together, and then today you felt you told me you felt a lot more grounded and stuff. Yeah, um, I was a little nervous actually about speaking here and uh, I don't do a lot of public speaking I'm, I'm a coach really that's what I mainly do and run events or workshops but nothing nothing like speaking on the stage and um, I had some ideas and last night was the first time I really practiced it since being in India and it just flowed and I felt really like I got this and I was a little bit nervous before I went up on stage but it just it just went well, you know, and uh, I think I was probably held by being in the energy of the room. And um, I decided to just talk about stuff that I really knew, which was my own experience. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's been talking about the energy in the room. So you felt the love. I did, yeah. 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 Thank you. You're, you're most welcome. Yeah, it felt like I needed to have breath that red forward session just to bump the asses into my mind, but now it's him and neck. But thank you for bringing the energy back. Oh, you're welcome. So where did you come in from, Francis? So I was in Montreal, but uh, I'm, I'm going back to the little women in California. I was to back, but that's why I did this in the stream racing. So uh, my address is in my favor. Okay. So there's a lot of different possibilities. I'm going to supervise and meet with some people. I don't know if I with one. I would live there. But like, well, it seems like I love that. What I'm hearing so far is that people are saying the impossible becomes possible. And here the one book. That's really more of that. Well, yes. Um, why did you come all the way here? 
I just, I think to me, it's a commitment, which is the commitment of uh, breaking the, the, the code and, and you know, knowing that this makes a difference. And um, I mean, Gary, I, I've met Gary, he really changed my life for, for a long time. And uh, what we worked on, I get what the document is, thanks to him and to the work that we've done in Kauai last year in November, and like four days that was with him. So you can imagine, like, well, it's, I, I think it's such a gift. Because normally when you coach for maybe an hour, like once, it, like once every while, how are you spending three days in that half where you're coach? Yeah. And you really get to know the process of rewriting the code. So for me, it's, I think that's what it is. The being is, is everything. And so it's just good to, to do the commitment. I follow my intuitions. And every time that I've done it, I never lost. Like I always got something out of it. And I had a feeling I had to dump. So this, you would say, is an extension of the work you were already doing. It's a confirmation. It's a, it's a commitment about, you know, sometimes it doesn't make sense to do things like that. We're like, why, why are you do You don't need to do that again. But the fact that we're making this effort, I think, is where the work comes, you know? Right. Like you're showing a commitment. We were showing a commitment that you believe in, in that. And just by doing that, and by being that and doing that, it tetrates everything. And I've done many, many times in my life so far events that, you know, I didn't necessarily have the means sometimes at times. And I decided to still do it, found a way, and I never lost. Like, I just created so many great memories, people that I met, like, my life has changed. So I had a feeling that it was the same. What would you recommend to someone who's, uh, on the fence about investing in themselves in this way. I mean, you've already done, it sounds like an intensive with Gary Mahler, and now you're all going here in Mumbai. You're about to change house, it sounds like, and still, you seem here so present and grounded. So what would, what would you offer as something for people to consider? It's a great question, Ryan. So while you're doing podcasts, I was about to say something I don't think I've ever said before. I think it's, uh, I would, I would take a look at, and if, I don't think I've ever said it. I would take a look at the reasons why not. This, I say that now because I know that the, what's in the way is basically what's running you. You come up to always the same excuses. And, so, and, and then you can see if you're really committed or not to, to change it. And so I, I, for myself, I love to explore anything about the mind. So I'm always, you know, uh, continuing to go to the gym. Because if I stop, then I'm, you know, and so I think I'm going to just kind of deplete itself in some ways. So I have two other things that I know for sure I will do in my life. One is, uh, it's called the, the dark therapy. So three days of silence. And black, like you don't see anything, you don't, like you don't, and, and I think it's such a powerful way to explore what's going to go inside your mind. For three days, darkness, silence, you have no idea what time it is at all. Like imagine making how you go to the washing, which is to guess where it is, like in three days. And I'm sure at times they're thinking, is it one day now, two days, three days, oh my God, it's getting on. Yeah. I'd rather I've done the pasana because now I, I think I would have a little bit of a training to it. And the other thing is the bow bow, just like going deep down inside. I've done ayahuasca two times, two different races, and uh, I'm always interested in the best of myself. All right, DNS, I get to interview you. <laughs> Thank you, Cordelia. <laughs> <laughs> so, what what is your immediate... Um, impression of being at the ultimate experience today. Like, what what are you feeling in your body? I'm I'm feeling so fun and happy that I tore my pants. <laughs> Villa, my pants were torn, okay. and I have to replace it. Uh, uh. <laughs> really, I used, I wore white, but I'm wearing black. Oh, okay. Because literally, I torn. I was so excited, Villa. <laughs> literally, torn my pants. Really, it's a great uh, event I learned so many things mm. some hard things I learned it mm. I accepted it I sit with it but during the event I let it flow and uh, it really helped me really really helped 
Wow. So you were able to process some things during the event. Yes. And I'm, I know that. Okay. Until the end of the moment, uh, end of the event, I have to overcome that. Yeah. I was feeling that and I did that and I'm proud of it. <laughs> wow. So your capacity to just process things in the moment, is that new or that's just, that's who you are? So whenever I read books, generally, if I see an opportunity that shows that I'm doing something wrong or something I can do better, I will do it right there. Hmm. Otherwise, there's no use for me. That's how the interview with Stu happened because I uh, studied his, uh, sorry, my book, <laughs> the book. And I was like, when I was reading, I put myself in his uh, shoes. Like literally, you will not believe that, but I read a book a day generally. But I read that book for two and a half weeks. Wow. Because I was literally, okay, when Steve was in uh, uh, this shed, I literally imagined myself as Steve. Like that's that's the level of uh, implementation I did. And okay, I felt, okay, this is what he must felt. This is how I am feeling. This is how he dealt with it. This is how he became. So such kind of things. I also do that, be that, and so that's why I learn a lot. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm really grateful. Yeah. So, what is it that you will take into your, take back to your life? Like, once you walk out these doors, right? Because that's, everybody in here, we all are in this loving space. But, like, once you hit the streets of Mumbai. So, one thing I have understood that, I don't care about the outcome, but it all matters is where we are coming from. The place is very important. I learned it. Like, really, I learned it. I come from a place of love and care and responsibility and familyness. So that's why I don't care about our outcome. And I practice that. I really, really, really don't feel that I have uh, uh, any strangers. Everyone I'm feeling as my family member. That's why I could not stop myself talking with anyone. Like, I want to talk with everyone. See, hi. Hi. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, this is a podcast She's that's going you. on. What's up? Uh, I'm, I'm talking to him just like I talk to you and Johannes. Oh, oh, okay. So, so I'm just using you as an example. Oh, thank <laughs> Sorry, you, thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> so he's grabbing you, Leelani. <laughs> yeah, see, I yeah. love to talk with people. Yeah. And it happened here. Okay, yeah. Donald. Did you get your interviews? This I'm, is going I'm doing on. it now. Here, no, this is going on. <laughs> I was thinking we had such a, a great talk. And then I was like, I should have just recorded it. And so, yeah, my camera crew is not here. Okay. But, so I'm doing it just on my phone. So if you want to... Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> raw, raw and real. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. So... Um, so my back is done? <laughs> Unless you have something more to share. Uh, guys, what one can be, one must be. Why I'm saying is that I just realized that... Uh, Amy was talking about Amy, sorry, uh, Abraham Maslow, and it was his statement. What one can be, one must be. Because it's not about you, uh, it's about all of us. Amy. <laughs> so thank you, Cordelia, you're awesome as always. Thank you, BNS. And um, I mean, I think the black pants suit you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I got the inspiration from you. You're much taller in person. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I sure <laughs> am seventh person to say. Okay. Yeah, really? You get that a lot too. Yeah. They're saying that I did not expect you to touch. Yeah. I didn't expect you to be tall either. So. Oh, you do. Eighth one. Thank well, you. I mean, being taller than me isn't hard. So. Okay. Oh, well, look, I'm from Ireland, so we're not blessed with the height in Ireland. I, I don't know if you know that. I didn't I know, know that. that. Thank you. For that. Generally, yeah. Okay. So, why did you come all the way from Ireland? Why did I come from Ireland? Because two reasons. I will be coming back. No problem, being asked. Great to meet you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. To Pleasure. Um, two reasons. I wanted to come to India. I've always wanted to come to India. And of course, the Bing movement and Steve being here. And I don't know if I told you this, Cordelia, but I reached out to Steve about four years ago, sent him an email, and he said, okay, give me a ring at 12 midnight my time. I ring him and I'm chatting to him. I go, Steve, you, you did this course with University of Santa Monica. I see you and a couple of other high-profile coaches, you know, have done the course. Would you recommend it? And he goes, oh yeah, it's an amazing course. He set me on the path to studying with USM, and of course, USM wouldn't take me then. 
because it's an in-person course. Oh, so you, you practice in trios and you need to be there in person. Oh, okay. Uh, and then, of course, the universe shifts things around for you with COVID. And they shift everything online and go, you know the way you want to do the course with us? You can now do it. <laughs> and I had the most amazing experience doing the course at USM, driven by Steve, of course. Wow. Yeah. So I just went up to him there and I just said, thank you for setting me on the path to do, you know, a year with USM because it, it was a phenomenal experience as well. Okay. Yeah. And so that um, that led you to, how, how did you come to the book? Did you get the manuscript? or no. did you? Re- oh, okay. No. So how did I come to the book was by happenstance. Hmm. So I'm on the internet one day. Yeah, so I don't read. I do audibles all the time. So that's how I consume my books. Uh, I'm on the internet and what gets recommended to me on audibles is the book. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So... I honestly, I read the book or listened to the book in about two days. I just yeah. absorbed it. I sent Steve an email and, and I go, "You'll never guess what I've just found." And you know, I sent him a picture of the book and I said, "I'm I'm I'm, I'm listening to it." And I bought three other copies, which I sent to friends. I said, "You have to read this book." A lady in California, another coach in Ireland, and another friend I sent it to. And uh, oh, the book blew me away. There are books you read, and I'm sure you found this, that just lift your soul. And that's how I felt after reading the book. Oh, I was blown away. And then I sent him his end story. That was just something I took from the book in terms of how he, his, his being, and kind of his end story kind of matched his way of being. I love it. So, did you have any expectations based on your previous experiences with Steve coming into this event? Well, (laughs) BNS is great in terms of, you know, all the work he's done in the background. So, I I got to experience Steve a little bit through YouTube. Mm -hmm. I I know what Steve is like, but honestly, um, I think I said this to you already, Mm -hmm. this surpassed all my expectations. It Mm -hmm. really did. Uh, I said to you now, I'm feeling really emotional but so much energy because you know it, it, if I didn't eat this evening I'd be fine I'm, I could yeah. quite happily go through the evening and, and also if this had gone on for the three hours I would have taken every bit of information and still been absolutely focused and absorbed wow. in, in what they're doing because it's so highly charged and it's the, you know it's, it's the frequency the vibration and it's the amount of love and authenticity you're picking up from the speakers so yeah. What do you suppose gives it the higher vibration? It's the authenticity. It's it's the way Steve... The level of detail got into the planning. It's the way Steve ad-libbed some of this in terms of just picking on people to speak randomly. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's Karai, whether it was Raja, uh, whether it was his son. And each of their stories, even though they hadn't prepared were just amazing and they came straight from the heart so not a prepared speech but something that just came straight from the heart and of course everyone picks up on that yeah yeah so the um yeah everyone that i've talked to so far has talked about this deep heart connection so you felt that even with the speakers Uh, uh, of course oh my god this place is reverberating and yes. you know the way that Dr. Joe Dispenza, mm-hmm. you know, he talks about, you know, we all give off frequency. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if you have 300 people in the room here all giving that off. Yeah. There's endless possibilities, limitless possibilities. Completely. Completely. Thank you, Donald. I Pleasure. need to get your information. Yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm on the Facebook group anyway. Oh, okay. uh, there's just only one Donald, I think, in the Facebook group. Okay. I'll leave the two of you too. Yeah. Uh, hi. Hi, Becky. How are you? I'm fabulous. Yes. How are you? So good. I know. So good. I feel like I'm frozen right now. I do too. I do too. I'm, I'm kind of like, I, I even, the other minute, a minute ago, I was like, I need some water right now. I just got like, <laughs> Did they like, bring you water? water? Yeah. But I'm, I didn't. I, I don't can't. I don't eat much of these things, so it's just gonna gonna be time to eat. Yeah, and change clothes and <laughs> take a shot. <laughs> yes, and all those things that a body needs. All those things a body needs. So, I'm hearing you say that you're full. Like you, you don't really need to eat. Anything. 
Yeah, yeah, it was oh. already on. Okay. <laughs> What I mean by that is just I'm fulfilled. Mm. You know, part of my document is I'm devoted to the fun, fulfilling, and spectacular financial future. But if you can't have, be fulfilled by something, then um, I, I I know that every single thing isn't probably fulfilling. Um, but I I like living my life that way. Mm. Today was spectacular. I mean, you're, like you said, floating on air. And I, I also feel like there's, it's not so much of little points and points and points to capture, but it's like the whole feeling of now what's going to be, now what's going to happen, now what's going to be different in my self and who I, you know, who I'm being in different contexts that I hadn't thought of before. And one part that was so amazing to me was having the guy from the hotel, the yeah. housekeeping guy, go up and read that back of that book because he read it in a way and, and the pages, of course, we hadn't heard it that way before, right? Right. So you can only hear it in your own voice when you're reading it yourself. But then to hear someone who's so new at this, yeah. we have so much animation about it. I want, I want to go back and read those and really look at that. Because um, there's always fun exploring, and I'm an explorer, so I like learning and figuring new things out. And there's a point where you just like let it rest and let it just be what, what it's going to be and see, see what this is going to mean. So right now, for example, after this, you have to move hotels or deal with you know other kinds of logistics. Yeah. Who are you going to be in those situations? <laughs> <laughs> No fair. <laughs> I need a hall pass. <laughs> no, I did all the work already. I just have to get a car, go to the other hotel. Now, do I either do that now or do I do it later? No big deal. I would. I think everybody around me would appreciate me taking a shower. With me. <laughs> I can leave that for later too. Anyway. Yeah. You know, because it's, I, I asked that question because just like we were all feeling in this, this, this vibration, right? Excuse me. Do you have a new bottle? Yeah. Okay, Courtney. So, you as a speaker, though, what did you have any expectations coming into this? I did not have any expectations because I wasn't told what we were going to talk about. Oh. Nothing. And so I, 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 I said to Steve, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be talking about. We're not sure. It's a, it's a we know it's a panel thing, but he said, "Well, I wouldn't leave it up to chance like that." I would ask him, "Why aren't you asking me?" Right. So that night, I texted Runja, and, and he was taking his son to the hospital. So that was that. So thought to myself, I mean, I think having an expectation of how something's going to turn out is like setting yourself up for something that you have no control over. Because I can't, I can't have an expectation of how the audience is going to react. I can't have an expectation of anything that's unpredictable. So what I'm passionate about, though, is the whole creation of and the benefit of my document. Because I, because it serves me in many ways every day and it, it, sometimes they blend together one will, you know, they're like one phrase will like come into the next phrase or a different one will come up when I need it or it'll mean something different to me they come up because I'm diligent about as a, as a practice about I have I, I listen to it in the morning it's recorded I listen to it in the morning before I even turn on a light, you know, I wake up and I just push record, and then I listen to it again before I go to get in bed, get all tucked in, you know, push the button, listen to it again, and I just think it's the most beautiful thing to do that, first thing and last thing, and, um, and, and then I also am doing a practice called heart math, where I, uh, heart math is like, uh, the practice of heart math is where you, it's about having your... EKG and your EEG match. Because most of the time we go around life and it's not doing that. You know, these are, and then your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems are out of whack, which affects everything. Especially when you're traveling and you've got jet lag and you're moving hotels and you're like, you know, it, it, and but, you know you're busy every minute and you've got something planned and you, and you have, you know, jet lag kicks in. 
So all the heart math is something I do every morning too, and so they have a, the idea is to get in coherence so that way. Is it the deep breathing, like like to the count of eight in and the count of eight out, as if your heart's doing the breathing. So mm. it's really getting into your. When some people say get into your heart, it's like no, actually pretend like you are in there. Mm. <laughs> actually let your inspiration and your exhalation come from there, you know, and a, a great way to do that. It's like you saw that I had a pa- my paper document, and yeah. thing, I'm, that's like pages out of a Bible for me because it's like tattered and worn and torn, but I, that's, I keep that in the front cover of my journal. And I have it in my lap, so there's a little gadget you can have one clip onto your ear and the other one clips right here near your heart. Turn it on, you can follow it on your phone. There's an app called Inner Balance on your phone. You show it to you because it wouldn't work. And I'm and I do that and I'm now finding that I can get into coherence really fast by having by reading through my document. Like slowly reading through embodying it in my heart. And then at the end of doing my document, which doesn't take me, you know, like three or four minutes, then I'm wanting, I decide, like, first of all, I start with my family, you know, like, send love from my heart, like, beaming it straight into the heart of my daughter, and then my two boys, and then, you know, and and whomever else comes to my mind, and then different people come to my mind, it's kind of surprises me sometimes, always Steve, and, um, and others, you know, just depending on, on the day. And then I turn this off, and then, and now I'm in that place. And what made me also want to do it is as soon as you quit doing it, you can drop into the most deep meditation, and and there's nothing but silence, and you, you feel a whole sensation in your body. So my document is always in use not advertising that I'm just saying that it has served me so well and because I went through the blood sweat and tears part of it to yes. get to the actual part because where there's an actual document it's right. not just the affirmations or, I was talking to a lady saying I'm just having so much trouble with it because I feel like I'm I always feel bad about it when I read it because I'm not you know, I'm not bad I'm like, well, what was the process oh the what because oh I didn't want it. that sounds like it would be terribly uncomfortable to go through it yeah you're right it's terribly uncomfortable to go through it if you want to do it because you come up with all the reasons why what's been going on in your life that makes you feel like you don't belong somewhere or you are, are incapable or but even worse things like someone saying something to you that is so hurtful they've stuck in there and I've got a lot of those that I, you know that I had and then the middle process and that's when I was doing all of that Steve said fill up page after page after page he said in that that all that when you get done with that on the next visit that's when we're going to burn down the warehouse but you're going <laughs> to fill up a warehouse full of all of those things you just keep writing those things out and that's when I said having only looked at the books like the way some people read it because I hadn't heard all the rest and I hadn't read all that it was like I had seen his document in there and so I thought oh, Oh, I'm so glad as I started writing out little document things and that's when I texted him and said I'm so grateful that I thought I was so proud of myself that I've been <laughs> that, I, that I've already read the book and you know like I've got to start the document because this would be awful if I hadn't and that's when he said stop being a smart rat you're not you're not keeping our commitment so I was like it's already bad <laughs> now you just made me feel even worse <laughs> anyway um, there's a couple of things I hear there so there's a distinction between the way you developed your document with Steve versus this other person you had a conversation with who was just developing it from reading the book and skipping the parts well I think that that part isn't as um I, I wish it were strengthened a little bit, the forgive yourself part. Because I was saying to this lady, I said, see, like, that lady with the red purse over there, if she looked over here and said, like, I don't like your outfit, you don't care because you don't even know her. But it's it's this, it's when we judge ourselves. Yeah. Like, I forgive myself for judging myself as incapable. I forgive myself. But it's like how could I believe that about myself? That's yeah. I'm already I'm already in pain. Why would I keep doing that to myself? Just taking responsibility so that you can move on, for God's sake. And then once you get to that, and you're sitting there, and he's okay, read every one of those things out loud to me. I'm like, again, you know. And then and then you say, and I forgive myself for judging myself as what as I don't know, you know, all those things that come up with these two 
and then the next thing, and the truth is, I belong here. The truth is, and the, and then the one like I am made of God, and when that came out, Steve said, "Oh my God, that's like scripture, Becky. You should say made of God, and I create magic in every area of my life." Line, Becky Robbins. And that's like your quote for your life. And it just started coming through because it was a holy experience then. So how could I not want to read that document or recite it to myself all the time? Because it's like... You're recreating your story. I'm recreating, and I'm, I'm comforting, and I'm soothing myself, and it's like my bedtime story and my wake-up-in-the-morning story, and so... And I still have my ups and downs days, you know? It's like... It's like... But not many. And I also know that I'm not going to go through, like... Unless there's some crisis within my family or something, but like I'm done with all of the drama of life. I'm done with that. You know, I'm, I'm, I've got enough under my belt now. <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. So that's my story. So more opportunity to love yourself deeply. I, I'm actually hearing more of a nurturing. Totally nurturing. Because what was it you said? You you said you're a nurturer to the world. I am that I nurture all humanity. Yes. Yeah. And I should add creatures in nature because that's important to me too. Okay, I'm going to run. Thank you. Thank you. Do you mind if I interview you for the podcast? This is for the Ultimate Coach podcast. Uh, yeah, like for one right now? Yeah. It's like recording that or I, audio? No, it's just audio. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, did you read the book before you came? Yeah, before I even came here, I have it. Okay. Yeah, that's like good experience. Knowing uh, Steve's childhood, uh, his difficulties in his childhood. After, uh, like, there is an ingredient positive book they mentioned about like, his childhood. Plus, like, but, well, some people have mentioned only about positivity. Right. And they have mention about negativity, right? So it was good to know about his ingredient positive and how he lived his life from childhood to at this stage. I was like, we do still. That's right. Did you read when you read the book? Mm -hmm. Did you read it as if it was about you? Yes, yes. First, I started with the back back page. Then I went into the first two pages. Then I got into the book and went to the all chapters. Uh, I was like the back pages like like first impact. It was like okay, if you want to do that, how you should be. So that makes think you like twice. We are put doing the thing before makes you think twice. If you want to do something, how you should. You know, that is like an online thing. Yeah. Yeah. It is not the best experience I have. Yeah, everything is like always give love. Always oh, give love. Yeah. Oh, right. Hello, how are you? This so, my next served. So, hey, are we, are we, are the, how was the day today? It was good. I'm actually giving impressions for the podcast, so. Take a day share. Please, buddy. Okay. Yeah. About you. So, but I'm Roger or from Hyderabad. I'll send. Just like this. Okay. Well, so, uh, so you are from? I'm from Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Yeah, yes. I'm Cordelia. Yeah. I'm Cordelia. Okay. I'm one of the hosts for the Ultimate Coach podcast. So, okay. Yeah, so. Podcast. Yeah. So, I want to know over with you. Your channel is Yes, the, no, it's the. Oh, maybe they're getting 10. Or so, I got it. Well, so that's just the most powerful so along with that. I have seen well with the change in myself. And so um, he has a boss uh, in my whole first summit. He has a matter than up. Uh, so he has a friend friend. Uh, so uh, so uh, this has been great type of experience through now. Uh, so there, there is no strangers. Uh, so I come to know pretty late. Uh, so there is no sort of strangers to me, so I don't know the should put it out So uh, you your body in head, but like I know it's better trip. So through love is possible, that's a day of strangers. Yeah. So but, but, but thank you for uh, shifting our being. So through your four 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 cash I definitely follow all oh, speeches. You know, so I try to learn from you to work. That's all. I try to get a team get the get the tribute. So you have a base with ID? So <laughs> what are your immediate like takeaways? It's humbling. It's so powerful having all these people in this room and yeah. doing what it is that we're doing. You know, even now, like, look, we're still just yeah. collecting gifts. Hey, hey, yes, yes, yes. The pipe for receive me. Bank camera. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
I love it. So these are the gifts that uh, and Pranti, the gifts yes. that Conti made. Yes. And Henry just came by to, to give us, to make sure that we got ours. Yes. So. And it's just one blessing from one blessing to another blessing. And the the love that you feel in this room, I don't think you'll ever feel this ever again, to be honest. And it's just connections. Yeah. And everyone's humble. Oh. Yeah. Every single person I've met is 110% humble. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Fina. Yeah, I mean, to me, it, it's the... It's been the energy in the room that's been so powerful. We've heard a, a lot from speakers, and that's been amazing, and there's been gold all along the way. But as soon as I got here this morning, you could just feel the energy and feel the love and feel the vibration. And that has stayed consistent the whole day, even though we've been in here like 10 plus hours or something like that. And and so just the kindness of everyone and, and getting an opportunity to, you know, meet some people for you know the first time and and just all these you know micro moments together has been a crazy power it's been really really powerful what shifted the most for you i'm sure that i need to sleep on it but one thing that's coming up just because of some stuff that's been happening for me recently was the conversation around like when you are feeling like insecure and uncertain you just start like creating yourself in that moment and so when it feels like i don't know what to do next and i like it's just start just start the creation and 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 that will you know push you out of that that uncertainty that was really profound for me just based on some things that had happened right before um i came here um and the other thing that's really coming forward for me is just the reminder that it that love is just the highest expression of all this and so it's just always that you know how am I embodying love? Who am I being in this money around love? What's love wanting to do and show up and come forward and all of that? And just if we can't remember anything else, like just remember to do that. No. Yeah. Did you expect something different? Have you been to another being experience? I have not. This is my first one. Well, I should say I watched the live stream for the Arizona one. Right. Um, this is my first time, you know, being, you know, live in the room. And I didn't. I tried really hard not to come up with a bunch of expectations. I just really wanted to be open. I wanted to be open to learn, to be in the presence of, you know, a couple hundred amazing humans. And and so it was mind blowing to me in just the whole way that the day worked and the people that sometimes impromptu got up to speak and, and just what was shared and just the fluidity of, of how it all weaved together ultimately, you know, and people just showed up to serve everyone whether you scope or were a participant it's just a to me at least a strong i just flavor of of service at the hills thing you know and even like at the beginning of the event uh what i think it was was it breakfast when we met yes yes yeah. it was so long ago now i know right <laughs> It was, like, it was like 11 hours ago so yeah the, the way we met it was just kind of like um, one thing I've noticed is not only what it is, but there's this magnetic heart pull that you know, yes. kind of like you, there's 325 people in this room, but there's just those 10 where your heart is like, yeah, I have ties to it. You have a, an extraordinary connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what are your immediate three? Oh, my actions. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, no. We just said to each other about no one is worthy of our judgment. There is. No one is worthy of my judgment. Uh, everyone is worthy of my love, including me. Seriously. Especially me. Especially me. Yeah. That was a big epic uh, takeaway. That was a big takeaway. Um, no, I did and the other for me, the distinction that, that I'm thinking of just now is what Ranjan shared, which was not even he wasn't even planning to share, but he shared about um, being being uh, about doing presence and not being presence, and that that hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Yeah, we we, we just talked about how how much of an example it is to Steve for Steve to tell the story of how he 
messed up, how he was being judgmental, so that we're not putting him on a pedestal of him being perfect, but we like actually being work in progress, which he claims, like he never claims anything else, yeah. but it's easy to think, well, he's perfect, but I'm not. But to, to see that and to see that, you know, these gaps between aspirational being and default being or actual being, but you can have that and then not feel guilty about it or judge yourself for it, but love that, love the gap, love the conflict. Yes, love the conflict. And use it for awareness of things, you know, coming to a higher state of being. To use it for creation and creating, we're no, we were noticing too how they're creating, how he was able to create that, that a man in a, in a hotel that it was in that school, uh, that he had to read, that he was able to pre create hair. And then, um, and that creates us. And so it is Spucka, you know? Yeah. Uh, created all, it's creating us as he's doing it. And then we'll go out, you know, and create with our clients. And uh, so. I just saw also in, in awe of, as a particular example of that, how Steve was creating any man. Oh, yeah, yes. When Akko shared that distinction about listening and Steve shouted, for me, it's Amy listening. Mm -hmm. Like, I was so deeply touched when you said that. Because when I read that distinction, I, you know, came up with this, like, that spiritual person that I would, you know, unconditionally listen to. But to have as a possibility that that could be your spouse, your partner. Mm -hmm. but look, you would create your partner to such a degree to all of, hold so high that that could be the person that you would always give the benefit of the doubt. You would always listen fully breast that love to I don't know, that just so, literally blew my mind. So with that, who are you gonna be when you go home? I'm gonna be the most amazing husband, father, after son, brother, friend, and citizen. What would you say to people who are hesitating and in investing in themselves to come to something like this? Oh, it's being over everything. Being over everything. It's who you're being over everything. So that's, I mean, over everything. <laughs> I, we could, uh -huh. I can't, I can't, that's, that's what I would yeah. say. I mean, you know, and, and in terms of coming to something like this, yeah. is that you can, you can, when you said, for me, what happened was that I set this as a, you know, I, I, I set this out three weeks and as a, as a, not just something that I was doing. I made the decision. I committed to do it. And because I made the commitment to do it, my being expanded for the three and a half weeks that I was at home just, you know, practicing, right? And I was noticing it, myself fucking it up sometimes, but, you know, messing it up sometimes with um, family, like, you know, not being a, a present on, uh, but, but because, I, because I chose to make this commitment to come to this, it kind of called me to the carpet to just kind of let me. And now I really got to, you know, let's, let's practice so that when I get there, I had to, who do I, I took that very seriously, that question that everyone is asking, you know, who do I, that Steve was asking in that video, who do I need to be in order to cut it? Who do, how do I need to show up, right? You know, to be here. So yeah, it's a big question. And I love that for both of you. Thank you for sharing your work. Director. Thank you. I was asked to record a video on how going to Mumbai transformed my life. And it's honestly the state of being. I actually was not going to come to India because of my child, because of my children, two of them with special needs. And in my head, I was just like, oh, I can never make it. Financially, I don't think I can go. Leaving my kids for the first time for this like long and to be this far away from them wasn't in my mindset and then something changed some a force changed a force pulled to me a couple of my students was like yeah let's go and the momentum started and what what made it for me is that the minute I made that commitment to myself that I was going everything fell into place and I have met people from all over the world and connections that will never be broken 
connections that will only get deepened and understanding that there's a whole other level of people who are like-minded like me and are willing to help you no matter what without transactions back and it's so riching and so loving to hear and so loving to see all these humble people and how I am always willing to give and to be in that same state of mind was a blessing and to continue every single connection I made in Mumbai and just to learn and to grow for myself is just valuable, valuable. So one thing that I learned from being in Mumbai, it's just being with like-minded people and being loved and being seen for me. That's the miracle of Mumbai. Hello, Saloni. Thank you for being here with me. It's now been two weeks after the ultimate coat, the ultimate experience India edition. So like what, what are your greatest takeaways from the organizer's perspective? Hi, Cordelia. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And um, it's a lot, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I think it's been two weeks and I'm still processing, assimilating. It was a lot, both as an organizer and participant. And it was all about, to be honest, just, just a feeling of deep love. That's just how I felt throughout the part, throughout the part of co-creation as well as being a part of the event, I would say. From the very beginning, it was never about, okay, what's going to happen in the event? How many people are going to come? This was one thing that Steve has told us, just, just focus on who you are being throughout. Who are you going to be at the event? For me, that was one thing that really stayed very deep you know, in my heart. And I could see every time I was falling out of love and coming into any kind of, you know, judgment or any kind of anything else than love, just bringing myself back. And the day it was pure love, as you were there, you know that the energy of the room was pure love, all for everyone. So even though, of course, there were things to take care of as organizer, but uh, it was just overwhelming feeling of love, presence, and everyone, everyone just being lost in that. I think that uplifted the whole event, I would say, more than anything. That That's what my experience is. And uh, that, that's what really I can say about it. It was really difficult to even describe in words. It was an ultimate experience. <laughs> that's what I was. <laughs> yeah, and it's pure sport. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Hi, Cordelia. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about my experience of the miracle in Mumbai. One thing which I would like to say is that if there is a sincere desire, there is a dream, just believe in it, put out the intention, and the universe will make sure that it is taken care of. For me, it was meeting Steve. And can you believe it that I, ne I never imagined that I will get an opportunity to meet Steve. So it has been like a dream come true for me. And the second thing was to bring the book of being to India. And thanks to Steve and Amy for giving me the opportunity to get it print in India and a lot of people in India had the access to the Book of Being at a reasonable price. That was, again, something uh, which I had envisioned that, you know, this is something which should be there in the book rack. Though it's not there in the book rack of all the bookstores, but yes, it's in the hand of those who had a desire to understand their being. And you know what? Reading about the characters in the book, whether it was Gary, it was Steve, Amy, or Karan Rai, and actually meeting them, meeting like-minded people who understand what being is about, has 
you know, fulfill my soul. And this experience of being with everyone in Mumbai will stay with us forever. It was magical. And of course, it was the effort of Ranjan and the entire team which made this possible. It was a pleasure meeting you, Cordelia. And I'm constantly inspired by your posts, your strength, and a big hats off to you for speaking to all of us and, you know, wanting the community to know how was the experience for each one of us and then organizing the podcast as well. So thanks a lot, Cordelia, and thanks again for reaching out to me. Thanks for being a part of Miracle in Mumbai. And I love you and take care. Thanks a lot. Good morning. I've got a little bit of voice left, and I just wanted to make this recording. I hope it gets to everyone that it's intended to get to. It's very early on a Sunday morning, March 5th. If you're receiving a copy of this voicemail, it's because I consider you one of the great miracles in Mumbai. If for some reason you did not receive this, and you were one of the miracles in Mumbai, please forgive me, as was an oversight on my part. Amy and I enjoyed our every moment of this creation. Personally, it was the greatest six-month stretch of my entire life, and boy, did it ever stretch me. I've learned so much from each of you. I have loved so much each of you. I have expanded my beingness and my lovingness as a result of my association with you. Yes, you, the one listening to this right now. I am talking about you. You are the miracle in Mumbai. Thank you for the personal sacrifices each of you made. Thank you for the time and resources that you shared. Thank you for the countless hours of concerned decision-making you spent. Thank you for the life force you shared. Thank you for the things you taught me. Thank you for assisting me personally in many ways I will never know of. Thank you for the hundreds of things you did so that others could expand their beingness in being one of the miracles in Mumbai. Thank you for being kind, gentle, and loving. Thank you for corrections and asking for forgiveness when you weren't kind, loving, or gentle. Thank you for the countless hours of figuring this and that out so that you could be in Mumbai yourself to participate. Thank you all that you did continue to do to tie up the loose ends that come with such a huge event. Thank you for blessing my life. Thank you for blessing your life. Thank you for blessing the lives of thousands of our brothers and sisters that exist and reside on this tiny blue dot. I can easily say that the ultimate experience in the addition, what I like to call the Mumbai miracle, has become the very ceiling of my being, the high mark, the benchmark of my entire life. I am so grateful for it. I am so grateful for you. And I promise you that it will continue to grow and expand my being such that the ceiling becomes a new floor and I will create another ceiling. To say I love, honor, and respect each of you is, it would be an understatement. I love you beyond words, beyond time, and beyond space. I honor you as my brother, my sister, as my blood. I respect you for who you are and for who you are, who you are not. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As J.R.D. Tata said, common people have an appetite for food. Uncommon people have an appetite for service. You are all uncommon people. Your passion and pure service has been miraculous. You are miraculous. You are the miracle in the pie. Loving you, be blessed, be the miracle that you are. From SFH slash KB and his forever girlfriend, I will always be a miracle in Mumbai. I love you. Thank you for listening to this episode and recap of the Ultimate Experience India Edition. Now take some time to reflect and introspect on who you're being. If you haven't already, get a copy of the book, The Ultimate Coach Book, and visit us at theultimatecoachbook.com. Thank you for listening and... 
create who you're being with your every heartbeat and every breath. Thank you for listening. If you know someone who would benefit from today's conversation, please share this podcast with them. Also, we invite you to visit theultimatecoachbook.com so you can continue your personal exploration of being. There you will find links to join our wonderful community, get your own copy of The Ultimate Coach Book, and more. Simply go now to www.theultimatecoachbook.com. That's www.theultimatecoachbook.com. The link is also available in the show notes. We appreciate your support. Be blessed. Be you.